Okay, so today I want to deal with a topic that typically causes a lot of confusion, which is the law of diminishing marginal returns. To understand the law of diminishing marginal returns, the first thing we need to do is make sure we understand what marginal cost is and to be able to construct the diagram. So what is marginal cost? Marginal in economics is just a really fancy way of saying an additional unit. So if I say marginal cost, it just means how much extra cost is incurred by producing one extra unit. The fancy definition is marginal cost is the addition to total cost of producing an extra unit of output. Now, you should hopefully know that diagrammatically, marginal cost looks like a Nike tick. So it kind of takes the following shape. So it looks a little bit like this. So here's quantity, here's costs, and it looks like that. Okay, right, you guys can draw that neater than I am, and that's gonna be Q1 over here. Okay, right, let's understand a very important thing about marginal cost. One of the most important things to understand about marginal cost is the mathematical formula. The way that we get marginal cost is simply the change in total cost, so just the raw change, over the change in quantity output. All right, from now on, whenever you hear the word, the law of diminishing marginal returns or marginal returns, I want you to remember the following example. Imagine that you and I own a restaurant, and of course, in the restaurant, there is a kitchen. And let's assume that hypothetically, that there are four fixed ovens in our kitchen. Question number one, are we in the short run or the long run? Those of you that are listening attentively would have picked up on the fact that I said fixed ovens. In other words, we are in the short run because in the long run, everything is variable. The idea being that we can't install an extra oven to the kitchen, uh, it, there's not enough space, or it might be that it'll take a while for us to basically get like a bigger premises, expand the size of the kitchen or relocate entirely. In other words, we are limited by the four ovens that we have to work with. Okay. Now, Im imagine initially we hire one chef, and that chef is fairly productive. They produce a number of meals, a decent number of meals, and we pay them salary. We now go and employ a second chef and add them to the kitchen. Okay, what happens? Well, if you think about it, of course, total cost, of course, goes up because now we're paying a second salary. However, the assumption, and it's a pretty fair assumption, is that the number of meals they work together to produce is a lot higher than one person by themselves. In other words, output will be going up at a faster rate because they can work together. They've got two ovens to work with. So if you look at it this way, the top of the fraction is going up. So for sure, total cost goes up. But the bottom of the fraction goes up at a faster rate to begin with. And therefore, those of you who maths is kind of your friend, you would recognize the fact that that means marginal cost is decreasing. Now, if maths is not your friend, no problem. I'm your friend. So what we can do is we can just plug in numbers to make sense of it. So let's assume hypothetically that initially we were paying someone one pound. I know it's really illegal, but let's, we pay the one pound. And they were making one meal. One over one, obviously, really easy maths. One, yeah? Okay, we now add the second chef to the kitchen. So we now pay a salary of two pounds because there are two chefs that we basically pay. But we assume that the output is going up at a faster rate than how much costs are going up by. Let's choose a number like four. Two divided by four. Hopefully you recognize it's a half, yeah? What happened? Well, what happened is, is that marginal cost decreased when I added the second chef. The same thing happens, by the way, when you add the third chef. Because again, yes, total cost goes up. But again, they can work together. They each have an oven to themselves. Output goes up at a faster rate, so marginal cost again goes down. And then that happens with the fourth chef. The fourth chef, we add them into the kitchen. Costs again go up, but output now, every single one of them has their own oven. They can work together and collaborate. They can produce a lot of meals together, Yeah. If you notice then that quantity, as it rises from zero to Q1, can you see the marginal cost is decreasing? That is exactly why, by the way. But now what happens when I add the fifth chef to the kitchen? Well, when I add the fifth chef to the kitchen, now they start to get in each other's way a little bit. Now you have to wait for an oven to free up to be able to cook your meal. The point is, is that although output will still probably go up, they'll probably produce more meals together than they would have if they were four chefs. The problem is, is that output now is going up at a slower rate than total cost. In other words, now this, the top of the fraction is going up at a quicker rate or a faster rate than the bottom of the fraction. So therefore, what happens now? Marginal cost now starts to go up. And hence, at that point, the law of diminishing marginal returns has set in. So once you add the fifth chef to that kitchen of four ovens, now output goes up, but at a slower rate than how much costs are going up by Hence, you get to the point where marginal costs start to go up, yeah? So formal definition. Let me just actually zoom down a little bit over here. You know, I'll type it up for you guys. Because economics is full of really long, annoying lingo that you need to just recognize and understand. Let's annotate. Here. Um, here we go. So I'm going to type it up for you guys. The formal definition is as follows. So the law of dimension returns is, is the idea that 
when variable inputs, so when variable inputs are added to a fixed factor, initially, output rises at a faster rate than cost, and thus MC would be falling. So, so when variable inputs are added to a fixed factor, initially, output rises at a faster rate than cost, and thus marginal costs will be falling. Eventually, at Q1, so alluding to the diagram above, at Q1, output will begin to rise at begin to rise at a slower rate than costs, and thus MC will begin to rise. We'll start at this point. The law of diminishing marginal returns has set in. Okay, right. And just to clarify, by the way, this is a short run concept. So just in case they try to trick you in the exam. Okay, right. Economics is full of what I call like really unnecessary, convoluted, wordy definitions explaining really basic concepts. So let's actually make sense of the definition together. Let's understand what it says. The key words, when variable inputs, right. What were the variable inputs in the example I just went through with you guys? Well, the chefs were the variable inputs because we got to decide how many chefs to keep adding to the kitchen are added to a fixed factor. What was the fixed factor? The ovens, the four ovens that we were worked with, working with. And that's it. All it basically therefore says is that initially, output goes up at a faster rate than cost. Marginal cost therefore is going down. But eventually, at Q1, output will go up, but at a slower rate than cost goes up by. And now at that point, the law of diminishing returns has set in and marginal cost is now rising. Hopefully, that makes it a lot easier to understand.